You might know that I'm an avid biker. That's road biking. My wife would probably say fanatical. And I was out biking one morning on Reseda Boulevard heading south up the mountain to a beautiful overlook. The cars were lined up about five deep at two stop signs. And as I'm pulling up to the stop sign, this beautiful supercharged matte finish Tesla cuts into the bike lane in front of me, passes all the cars, does a brief California stop at the stop sign, and then shoots up the hill. If you have a Tesla and you have ludicrous mode, that's really a thing in a Tesla. Fast, fast. I did a little and then just kept slogging up the hill. Well, I got to the top and there's this overlook and there's the Tesla parked at the overlook. And standing outside the Tesla under a tree is the owner of that Tesla. Over his shoulders is a talit. On his head are tefillin. And his nose is buried in a prayer book. As I slog past him, I have to admit, I considered all the snarky things I could have said. But when you're on a bike and the driver is in a hunk of metal, you don't say anything. You just keep, keep riding. But I thought to myself, he was on his way to prayer. And he endangered others, broke speed laws, broke traffic laws, and was just downright rude. I wanted to shout at him, hey, what happened to via haftalorecha kamocha? Love your neighbor as yourself. It's right there in your book. There's a classic Talmudic story where a heathen, in other words, a non-believer, goes to the great Rabbi Hillel over 2,000 years ago, and he says, Rabbi, teach me the Torah while I balance on one foot. Without fl flinching, the great Hillel says, what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. That's the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. Now go and learn. That's Hillel's version of the Ahav Telorecha Kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself. It's such a universal value that almost all the world's religions have some version of it at their core. Unfortunately, it seems it's observed more in the breach than in its actual application. So drawing from the Torah and from Hillel, Judaism developed a concept that's called Derech Eretz. Literally, it means the way of the land. But better, one might say, virtuous conduct, or even better, living, love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm pitching this idea to my wife. And I said, I'm going to talk about Derech Eretz. She says, you're going to talk about Derech Eretz? You're just going to tell people to be nice to each other? So I said, well, I could talk about politics, climate change, or racism in America. She said, talk about Derech Eretz. <laughs> now, I want to be clear, though. I'm not addressing this issue because it's the least controversial topic. I'm talking about it today because I believe it's so important that we all need to hear it today and hold on to it, not just for the rest of the year till next Rosh Hashanah, but for our lives. Because we are experiencing a breakdown in Derech Eretz. Not only is it tearing families apart, but it's literally tearing this country apart and the Jewish community apart. It's at the core of some of the deepest conflicts in our communities today. It's at the root of the gridlock we see in our public discourse and in our governments. It underlies the nastiness that we see on the internet. And this unraveling of the societal fabric of Derek Eretz has re resulted in a level of violence that we haven't seen in 50 years. So you see, it's not some touchy-feely topic, can't we just get all along idea. It's really about the future of our communities and our nation and world Jewry. Because those two things, our nation, world Jewry, and so much of the world, needs a reestablishment of basic civility. It's a cultural pandemic that propagates me-first-ism and sometimes me-only-ism. You know how it goes. As long as I or my loved ones get what we want, you don't really matter that much. I'll make a scene in public as I berate the clerk at the store or a flight attendant on a plane. My regard for their humanity or the needs of others, well, that's inconsequential. My kid's school, I'll demand certain special privileges from my kid. 
despite school policies and procedures that have in their mind the well-being of the entire school. Or maybe I'll just give my kid a little extra help on their assignment to give him a leg up. If my advantage might disadvantage others, well, not really my problem. The collective failure of Derek Eretz reveals the ugliest sides of humanity. Maybe you heard about this shameful event, an anti-Semitic event in Jerusalem this past summer. An American family gathered for a bat mitzvah at the southern portion of the Western Wall, the Davidson Center. As their service began, a group of ultra-Orthodox men surrounded them and started grabbing at prayer books and Torah scrolls and heckling them. One of them got their hands on a, Torah, uh, on a prayer book, ripped out some of the pages and blew his nose on the pages of the prayer book. He, something he would never do to his own prayer book, but he did it to those Jews' prayer book. Jew against Jew can still be anti-Semitism. The language they screened at the American family can't be repeated from this bima. What level of disregard for the humanity of others underlies that behavior? The loss of civility in our universities is also well known. Situations such as this are widespread. A, uni a university professor invites her students to explore the issues surrounding Confederate monuments and symbols throughout the country. Some of the students in the class complain to the dean, claiming she's created a hostile learning environment. They demand her dismissal, and it escalates and becomes a big deal on the campus until the professor decides to take early retirement and discontinue her teaching. Have we lost the understanding that education is supposed to be provocative and sometimes create discomfort, and that such an unbalance is actually a good way to learn? The Jewish embrace of debate is legendary. You know the joke, two Jews, three opinions. Yet, the breakdown of Derech Eretz has even sullied that Jewish virtue. A conversation at a synagogue exploring the position, positions of the Israeli left and the Israeli right turns into a shouting match. Accusations of fascism, nationalism, and anti-Semitism fly back and forth across the room. Instead of wrestling, with the thought-provoking ideas and challenges brought by different opinions, each side, both lovers of Israel, depart angrily and tragically divided. Have we Jews forgotten that Israel is the homeland of all the Jewish people? Not, that the Jewish, not just the Jewish people who think like me. You could surely add your own anecdotes to the ones that I've shared. So this astounding and stubborn paradox, it endures. Despite the centrality of loving one's neighbor as oneself to all the world's religions and even to the Girl Scouts, despite our lip service to the idea, we all fail at loving our neighbors at ourselves, as ourselves or doing unto others or not doing unto others, as we would have not done to us. So why am I talking about it today? I think it's obvious. Let the change begin here. Let it begin now. Let it begin with each of us. It shouldn't be surprising that Judaism present, presents us with a blueprint for building a society through Derech Eretz. It was first written in the Talmud thousands of years ago. Yes, they had the same problem thousands of years ago. It's an integral part of daily prayers. It goes like this. Elu devarim she'en lehem shior. These are the things whose reward are limitless. A person enjoys their fruit in this world and also in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, Engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer, and making peace among people. Then it ends, Talmud Torah keneged kulam, the study of Torah leads to them all. These simple acts of caring and compassion in our ancestors' conception were the building blocks, and still are the building blocks of community. When I show up for you, both in joy and sorrow, when I'm committed to your well-being, sincerely committed, when I want to treat you with respect and with dignity, because I know that I need you to show up for me, and I need to treat you with dignity so you'll show up for me and I'll show up for you, 
But if I alienate you with derision and disrespect, or if you alienate me, we won't be present for each other when we're in need. I want to be clear. Practicing derech eretz doesn't mean we have to agree with each other. We can passionately disagree. In fact, we can both hold that the other is 100% wrong. However, in our conversations, in our debates, in our arguments, we'll listen and we'll ask questions. What can I learn from you, even though I disagree with you? What can you learn from me, even though you disagree with me? If, in the past year, you have not reevaluated some position you hold, then I would like to suggest to you that you listen a lot more carefully. The president of Harvard, Lawrence Bakow, brought this idea to his graduating class this year. He said to them, we need to be slow to judge and quick to understand. So here's my challenge for this year. Commit yourself to the practice of Derek Eretz. And it's a practice because we have to keep working at it. We all support a broad range of causes and organizations. We consume a vast amount of information. We pass on that information. We even generate our own content, some of us. Stand strongly by your positions. Good for you. Disagree or agree with enthusiasm. However, in your disagreement, take on the position, not the person. Resist name-calling, labeling, classifying. Those are all intellectual shortcuts, folks. Instead, mount a convincing argument. That's both derech eretz and a reflection of a thoughtful person. When I counsel couples in preparation for their weddings, I teach that we have many different personas. At work, we present ourselves in a certain way. To our kids, we're another version of ourselves. I ask couples to build a persona for each other, one that's committed to kindness, generosity, patience, and love. Each of us can craft a public sphere persona, one that reflects our commitment to Derek Eretz. We can live passionately and with conviction, and we can honor each other, and in so doing, we honor ourselves. And when others around you fall short because they will, Double down, be even more committed. Gently demand derech eretz of others. And when they cross your lines, demand it more forcefully. If you're a contributor to an organization, you have real skin in the game and you can advocate for change. And if the organization doesn't rise to your standards of derech eretz, maybe it's time to move on. There are many organizations in our world that seek civility throughout our country and Israel. Support their work. Learn from what they do. We can't abide by the idea that nothing will change. That's profoundly un-Jewish. At our core, we've always believed that each of us acting could craft a better world. And finally, Vishinantam Levanecha, it's in the Viahafta prayer. Teach this concept to your children. Let them hear your words of respect, not derision for those with whom you disagree. Guide them in their own relationships. Derech Eretz, the way of the land, loving one's neighbor as oneself, basic civility. It's an age-old principle and practice. It's as important to the quality of our lives today as it was when it first came to the consciousness of our people. It's up to each of us to make a difference. Because if we don't, who will? And when we do exhibit Derek Eretz, we strengthen the foundations of our society, we protect our fragile American and Israeli democracies, and collectively, together, we help to build a better world.